Hello YouTube. In this video, we are going to be talking about my personal program, what I do for natural hypertrophy, <clears throat> and we're talking deadlift. So what is my philosophy behind deadlifting, how I program my deadlifts? For me, I'm the type of person who doesn't have any problems pulling from the floor. I've never had any recovery issues or injuries deadlifting. I can deadlift with a high frequency and it doesn't bother me. Where it becomes an issue, for me at least, is that in terms of progress, I've always found that deadlifting too often led to plateaus. I would plateau a ton. So my concern was gaining strength without burning my CNS because even though it doesn't it has no injury risk for me. Deadlifting makes me more injury prone on the squats, which is the one lift where I have to be careful with my back because that's where I usually hurt myself. So I am a conventional puller. I don't pull sumo. I hate sumo. My body is not made for it. I'm very weak at it. I tried sumo for about eight months last year and I got to, I think, 335 for sets of eight. I just don't like the way it feels. For me, <clears throat> the issue with sumo is that I pull with a very vertical torso and I have very developed glutes, which are already overpowered. And on the sumo, I, didn't, I never felt my back, I never felt my traps, I never felt my legs, I only felt my glutes. So it was, it was a bad lift for me to be doing because it was just making a strong point already even more dominant. So I always pull conventional, meaning I always pull with my arms outside of my legs. So for my very first, and I have two days of deadlift, so if you know the way I program, you already know that. My deadlift day, it starts with conventional deadlifts. I do one to three heavy sets, two to five reps. I do them raw with no belt because I don't like belts. And I do them with straps. I will make a ton of videos about straps. Straps are amazing. Every bodybuilder should wear straps. Pulling without straps makes no sense to me. I will expand on that. It's not for that video, but that's what I do. After that, I do some speed deadlifts. So for me, speed deadlifts, I like to do threes, so triples, and I usually do four sets of triples. What I call a speed deadlift is something that is fast. I know, shocking. Um, if it's not fast, I don't go up in weight, meaning that if I can do my four sets of three and it just flies up, then I'm good. Um, I superset that with leg raises and some band work for my, uh, for my shoulder mobility and for my thoracic extension, <clears throat> which I think is the most important thing to stay healthy, having a strong thoracic extension. We follow with cone rows, which are heavy chili rows, superset with stiff leg deadlifts. <clears throat> I would not advise people to do that. Why? Both lifts demand very flexible and strong uh, arm strings and a very, very strong lower back. Um, it's a recipe for disaster for people who don't have that. You will get injured because these two lifts uh, ask for a lot of uh, stability and stiffness in the lower back. I have that, so I do that. I superset with toe grip which is basically a grip movement, and I do four sets of that as well. I follow up with snatch grip shrugs, white grip pull-ups, and more leg raises. So I'm focusing after the, the deadlift and all of that work, I'm basically scoping down, my training is tailored towards my weak points. If you've watched my video about body part splits, you know that that's how I work, even though I call it a deadlift day, in reality, it's a arm string, lower back, glutes, and upper back day with an accent on certain parts of the upper back. <clears throat> and if you've watched my road to make to have a bigger back video, you know which points of my upper back I'm trying to bring up. So this is the reason why I will do cone rows because they tax the lats immensely. And I follow up with snatch rib shrugs because they tax the, the the traps and I need bigger traps, so I'm not big enough. I do white grip pull-ups, why? For the lats, again, I want bigger lats. 
I follow that with uh, Piana and Toshiki raises for my calves because I do calves almost every lower body day. Three out of four lower body day, I will go calves. Three out of four lower body day, I will do hyper extensions. So if you do the math in your head, there is going to be days where the two overlap and there's going to be days where they don't. So there are two days where I'm going to be doing both calves and hyper extensions. And these are both of my deadlift days. One of the squat day, I'm going to do hyper extension. One of the other squat day, I'm only going to do calves. So this is what I finish up with after calves. I'm doing wide grip pull-ups and hyper extensions. And I also do some grippers for forearms. And I finish with ab training. <clears throat> so that's day one. Day two. Day two, like I told you before, I don't want to pull conventional from the floor too often. Why? Because I stagnate if I do that. I need to throw something in the mix that makes it different. For me, it's snatch grip. I love the snatch grip. It's, for me, it feels amazing. Some people don't like it, but I, I have a deep appreciation for the snatch grip. So it's everywhere in my training. For my second deadlift day, I do snatch grip deadlift with higher reps. I like to do four to eight just because it feels so natural to me that I know that I can push the reps. And I followed that up by a deadlift stance safety squat bar. I will make a video about that lift because it is, in my opinion, the best accessory to raise your conventional deadlift. Nothing is better than that. I would even argue that it's better than deadlift variations, but I'll make a video. I superset that with cone grip. I have a tutorial video about that. And then I followed that up with Yates row from the rack. So it's a partial lift, wide grip pull-ups. Again, if you've watched the how to program an arm day, you're going to see something similar. I do different movements, but the muscles I work are the same. So I do deadlift stance, box squats. This one is for my glutes and arm strings because the snatch grip deadlift has a certain focus on lower back and quads. But then the Yates row walk the upper back, especially the traps and the lats. And I follow that up by rack pulls, which work the lats, uh, the traps a ton. So again, I'm focusing on my weak points. I do tons of wide grip pull-ups superset in that training. And I follow up with calves and hyper extensions. So this is how I program my deadlift, and if you've watched my how I split up my week video, you know I deadlift every four days. So this session is going to happen two days after my squat session. It's a body part split again, but because I have everything written down and everything fits together well, I recover enough so that I can still gain muscle and get bigger, even though I have such a high frequency on lower body lifts. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions or things that you think are not clear, please ask in the comment. I would be happy to answer. Have a good day.